I'm Keith from Atlas Genius and I'm going to show you my girls. So uh, first up is, I have two of these and this is uh, it's a 64 reissue Telecaster. So it's not an original 64 but what they do, they, this is made to the exact same specs as the original 64s. And there's something really um, great about this particular era. There's like a sweet spot. So Telecasters were originated in the early 50s. Uh, and some of the 50s are great as well. Uh, and something about the 64 was widely regarded as one of the sweet spots where tonally um, and aesthetically everything just really came together. And the Telecaster is, is an interesting guitar because it really hasn't changed since the early 50s. And the only things they changed were some subtle things such as the saddles here instead of being brass on the 50s ones. These, the 60s has it's more like a, it's just basically a, a, a bolt or a, you know, a threaded bolt cut off. So uh, that's the only difference. And, um, and tonally, like you hear this guitar and so many classic sounds have come from this one guitar. And even to the, the, the modern versions of this, they've hardly changed. Like, so this is a 64 reissue. Uh, I have two of those, so I just interchange between the two during the set because they're identical. They just just difference. The only difference is the colour, um, but it's the same guitar, both 64 reissues. Um, and so, if you look at this versus the brand new, this is like a, a modern day Telecaster 2016 Elite model. This here, it's hardly changed. Like there's a few. They've got a subtle. There's a switch here that does a um, turns this into a basically a, a wide humbucker. But other than a few th things like that, it's really the same guitar. And to think that. For 65 years or whatever it is, um, this has been like the sound of, of rock, of funk, of so many different things, and it's it's incredible for me to me that the Telecaster um, has stayed as relevant as it has for so many years. I mean, and Fender as a guitar company. If you look at Fender, do um, so the first guitar they ever did was the Telecaster. Then they invented the, the Stratocaster a few years later. I think around mid. In the mid 50s there was the Stratocaster which is obviously an iconic guitar. I don't have any in my arsenal but the, um, the Stratocaster is another classic and then they invented I think a few years later in the late 50s they invented this which is the Jazzmaster which was um, introduced as the top of the, the top of the line Fender um, for a couple of years. Commercially apparently a total failure in, its, in those original uh, years. And then they shortly after they discontinued it, and um, and then they brought it back in the 70s and 80s, and it became this iconic alternative uh, guitar, which you know, bands like uh, Sonic Youth and, and, and Nirvana and, and so many and Radiohead and so many bands since have used. Um, but um, such a small period of time, Fender did the the Telecaster, the Stratocaster, the Jazzmaster, and then the Jaguar, and. And they'd be such iconic guitars even to this the day, which blows me away. So, with the uh, with the Telecasters, especially the the 50s and 60s, they were using nitrocellulose paint, which I think was uh, was the paint that was used on cars. A lot of these colours actually, I think, came from car factories. So they would just go, what's what's uh, Ford or or GM using, and they would take those paints and use them on their guitars. And these wear particularly well. It's more of a like a porous paint, like it, it, the wood breathes just a little bit more and some people would argue that it doesn't really make much of a difference but for me, I feel like it, it sounds, uh, it certainly feels better to play, it's just a, it wears better um, and it, be, it sort of becomes a part of you a bit quicker than say the new, uh, all the new Fenders and the new guitars that are, are, are covered with, um, with like a, a, more of a polyester finish which is a harder, it wears a lot better but for me, it doesn't have that same feel, so that's why I tend to gravitate towards these vintage guitars. They beat up pretty quick. Like, I mean, I've had this for a year, and you know, she's it's taken a beating already. But um, it's part of the charm, you know. You can pay thousands of dollars to get that kind of wear if you want. The thing that attracted me to Telecast is is the sound is um, it's very focused. Uh, it, it, it's sort of like bell-like, it'll chime in a way that I don't find say a Les Paul or a Stratocaster um, or many, any other guitars really do um, and it can, it's capable of being beautiful when it's played clean but really aggressive when you dig into it and, and, and 
and drive it through some distortion or, or overdrive. And, and it holds up, the, through the whole way through it, it's a great guitar, like it's great clean, it's great overdriven, it's great when it's distorted. And no other guitar that I've played is capable of, of really covering all of those sounds. And for, for the longest time, we, I always played as the only guitarist in the band, so it, it, I needed a guitar that was capable of, of, of covering everything. Um, now we normally we tour as, as a, with two guitars, with two guitarists. But this one, um, this just does everything. Like it's it's, it's a Swiss Army knife of, ele of electric guitars. Um, Ernie Ball ten gauge strings. Um, they're just you know pretty pretty standard gauge. Um, they sound great. I change them every set, sort of four or five shows, um, and I never have an issue. For me, strings are just. I find a string that works, put them on, and I forget about it. And, um, and that's what I've been using for a long time. Um, and so all my guitars have tens on them. Um, and so the Telecaster is my main guitar. Like I'd say for 90% of the set, um, I'll use the Telecasters. And then for the odd time where I want a tremolo or something that's a little bit, um, maybe a little bit more aggressive, I'll use the Jazzmaster. This is actually a reasonably new acquisition. I've had it for maybe six months. And it's not as chimey, actually it probably is as chimey as a Telecaster, but it's not um, as focused, it's kind of a little bit more like furry around the edges with the tone, and um, it's basically a stock 65 reissue, uh, the original pickups, nothing's been changed, but um, I didn't really see a need to change them, so um, and it's just... Uh, Something about the 60s era Fenders just really appealed to me. It's just um, it's like you don't need to go any, any go past that because they kind of got it right in that period, um, and they just look so damn good. So, so I will use this um, in a, there's a song in the set called "City We Grow," which um, has a lead part which I use a tremolo. So that's why um, I'll go with this song, this guitar, because it has that tremolo. Um, and if there's ever a moment where I really want to just give a tremor a bit of a wiggle just to, for some ambient stuff, I will, I will go to this one because um, because it has the uh, the tremolo system on it. And I mean, it's a great guitar. It's just not quite as versatile as uh, say the Telecaster. So this is my trusty Gibson J45, and this is my it's my go-to acoustic. It's um, it's a dreadnought. It's got a nice focused mid-range, not too bright on the top. I really don't like acoustics where they sound all, uh, all brittle and like, you know, they might be on a Celine Dion record or something like that. I'm, I kind of prefer a bit more of a grit to the acoustic sound. And this one does that. Um, nice bottom end. Not too, not too deep because in a live band situation, you don't really need that, that really extended bottom end that you might get with, say, a, a jumbo. Um, and it, it sounds great with the, with the pickup. It sounds great um, with uh, mic'd up as well. And actually, the secret weapon of this one though is I retrofitted this Aura Fishman pickup in here, which for me is just it's not there's no comparison between a normal piezo pickup and and this Fishman. It just um, it sounds like a mic'd up acoustic even when you plug it in. And um, it took it from being like a nice guitar to just really an exceptionally great sounding guitar for stage. So I'll use this, there's a, there's a few songs that we occasionally do in the set, there's one called Levitate, um, which I'll use this guitar if we, if we do play it, which I don't think tonight we will, but I'll use it in Levitate uh, and also whenever we go to a radio station or anywhere else where an acoustic performance is, is called for, this is, this is my go. Hey, I'm Keith from Atlas Genius, thanks for checking out my guitars and uh, you can check us out at www.atlasgenius.com.